therefore warms my heart that we are now able to say that education in the public sector is free from kindergarten to senior high school and that this year legislation will be passed to redefine basic education to include senior high school. The health delivery system will be significantly strengthened by the expected arrival in June of 275 ambulances, i.e. one per constituency, to make treatment to make treatment of emergency cases more effective. I want to use the platform of this message to make a sincere, personal net appeal to the leaders of the two main political parties in our country, MPP and NDC, to come together as soon as possible, preferably next week, to agree on appropriate measures to bring an end to this worrying and unacceptable phenomenon of vigilantism in our body politic. <laughs> I've asked the leadership of the MPP to extend an invitation to the, leaders, to the leadership of the NDC for such a meeting. The security services of the country will be on standby to assist this meeting. If voluntary disbandment by the parties is not feasible, then I will initiate legislation in the matter. <laughs> vigorous debate, vigorous debate, and the exchange of ideas should be the true basis of political dialogue and competition in our country, not the activities of party vigilante groups. The security services are at the forefront of keeping us and our nation safe. Let me pay homage to the men and women of the services for the sterling work that they do. The Ghana Armed Forces, in collaboration with the police and other security agencies, have been in operations Calm Life, Cow Leg, Holt, Concord Fist, Congon, Citadel, Ahojo, and Vanguard. I call to you, men and women of the armed forces. Ghana is proud of you. We have been busy this past year, supplying the police with equipment, cars, motorbikes, drones, and other vital policing equipment. Financial clearance has been given, and they are in the process of recruiting up to 4,000 men and women into the service. That is the first. Gradually, we're increasing the police numbers, and the service, too, is waking up to its responsibilities and offering more training to their officers. I look forward to a better trained, better equipped, and happier police service that has the respect and cooperation of the people. We've established a national register of contracts on which all the petroleum agreements signed by the government have been published. This provides a platform for citizens to scrutinize the oil contract signed by government and a cause with international call for contract transparency. We've also signed the general petroleum regulations which provide for the disclosure of beneficial ownership information of companies operating in Ghana's oil and gas industry. This will ensure that people do not hide in the shadows to appropriate oil blocks to themselves at the expense of the citizens of our country. The interest of major oil companies in Ghana has become dramatic. Today, oil companies such as the American giant ExxonMobil and the Norwegian conglomerate ACA have signed petroleum exploration agreements with Ghana through the launch of the Ghana Oil and Gas Licensing Rounds of 2018. The bidding process for the allocation of new petroleum rights to prospective investors, the first such exercise in our history. Other global players such as BP, China National Oil, Offshore Oil Corporation, and Total have expressed interest in coming to Ghana. Mr. Speaker, be it in the oil industry or manufacturing or retail, every day demonstrates the urgent need for our own businesses to develop and flourish. We have put in place 
the mechanisms to train young entrepreneurs and to help establish businesses with a stimulus package to expand their companies. Under the Rural Enterprises Program, funded by the African Development Bank and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, 50 small-scale processing factories will be established by the end of the year in 50 districts across the country, particularly in areas where there's evidence of significant post-harvest losses. These will be owned and managed by organized youth groups with technical support from the Ministry of Trade and Industry. The Speaker, production in the economy as measured by real GDP growth has picked up very strongly in the last two years. From 3.4% in 2016, real GDP growth increased to 8.1% in 2017. In 2018, provisional data for the first three quarters indicate a strong real GDP growth of 6% higher than the annual target of 5.6%. Real GDP growth for 2019 is forecast at 7.6%. Ghana's recent GDP growth has placed it among the highest in the world. The fiscal deficit is being brought down from the 7.3 of rebased GDP in 2016 to a provisional 3.9% of GDP at the end of 2018. The debt to GDP ratio has declined from the 56.6% of GDP in 2016 to 54.8% at the end of 2018. Inflation has dropped from 15.4% at the end of 2016 to 9.9% in January this year, the lowest in six years as announced by the Ghana Statistical Service last week. Interest rates are declining, and so is the Bank of Ghana monetary policy rate. Our trade balance account, for the first time in more than a decade, recorded a surplus in 2017, and is expected to remain in surplus. In May 2018, a $2 billion euro bond was issued for 30 and 10 years of $1 billion each, with coupon rates of 8.62% and 7.62% respectively. And these were the lowest rates and the longest maturity in our history, signifying confidence in the economy. It comes as no surprise, therefore, that today Ghana is the leading recipient of foreign direct investment in West Africa. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, these are good figures, and as we prepare to exit from the IMF program in April, we expect impressive figures and good performance to continue. We are very much aware that this is not the first time we have had such a good set of figures, but we are determined to do things differently this time around. We have imposed on ourselves fiscal discipline, we are paying off legacy debts, and deepening good governance practice and business confidence is growing. We will maintain the discipline and bring progress to our country. We've decided to institute a legal framework to help with the discipline. We've passed the Fiscal Responsibility Law, Act 9H2, capping the deficit at 5% by law. And some two weeks ago, I inaugurated the Presidential Fiscal Responsibility Advisory Council, chaired by the eminent respected economist, Dr. Paul Aqua, former governor of the Bank of Ghana and former deputy director of the African Department of the IMF.